and into the pit, which is something else I want to talk about, is the, uh, the actual oh, okay. planting pit. Um, I we, wondered what that thing is. Now, yeah, what is well, that we there? came across a new There's... product, Dr. John, and this is, um, this is called RootWell. It's a, oh, it's a root health um, system that delivers uh, very simply um, and non-mechanically a uh, gas exchange, a nutrient exchange, and a, a irrigation at depth utilizing groundwater to a uh, tree's root system. Um, where, do you, where do you put that? We put it at a new planting. We put it right at the perimeter of the planting pit, right around um, uh -huh. and four of at, these at devices. The pit line. Right at the, yeah, if, I mean, if you can, the planting pit or the planting pocket, if you oh, will. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, if we put it at the edge of that, which should be about, if we're talking about a B and b a bald and burlap tree, yeah. Um, or a container tree it should be about three times the size of the root ball. Okay. We put these at the perimeter, and then the top sits at grade. Grade level. And then here at the top, we have a convection. Uh, what, what's going to happen is cool air will move in. Point touch down. camera one over there. Right, we have a tube going down there. Okay. Which comes down here. Cool air drops in to the device and the warmer air is pushed out in the nighttime. So we have a gas exchange, which as oh. Jim Urban has uh, told us in his very famous book, that that's, that's what's critical to, uh, to a uh, root zone, uh, is gas exchange, as well as irrigation. But what we're finding when we put these in is we're finding diving roots. So we're getting a root depth of 18 inches and deeper, where mm. In, in an urban and suburban environment, we just don't achieve that without something like this. Yeah. So we're doing this with new plantings, but we're also doing it with uh, established trees because we have a lot of clients who are really concerned about surface roots yeah. uh, that are interfering with their turf. Um, so what we're doing is we're augering these in to the drip line of a tree and encouraging diving roots in an already established tree. But uh, that's not a fertilizer thing. You don't drop fertilizer in there. Nothing. You can. Yeah, you could? Can, yeah, and we, we've been actually promoting um, sometimes a compost tea uh -huh. that can be delivered straight into that. This, this entire device and the, the cavity that it fills will be about 1.7 gallons. Uh -huh. So if you imagine the amount of water that it's going to take to fill that is minuscule compared to yeah. the amount of water that it would take to saturate an 18-inch root depth, which is nearly impossible to do anyway. So... We're, we're finding great results and very efficient water conservation because this is going to collect groundwater uh -huh. um, for, from a spray irrigation system uh, or any irrigation system that you might have. It's going to collect groundwater from grade, drop it down to the critical irrigation zone for a tree, and irrigate trees, which, which a lot of people don't understand. That doesn't happen with a, with a standard irrigation system. You, you, you're not irrigating your trees. With a, with a spray head irrigation system, all you're really doing is further compacting the soil. You're irrigating your turf, and maybe some of your broadleaf plants and your mulch And beds. your petunias. <laughs> right, right, uh -huh. which is great for your garden, but your trees can suffer. So this is, this is a um, device that, you know, we, we came across this device um, in, in our efforts to research uh, ways to mitigate the this, this surface root problem in this uh, Root, root health problem for our clients. Well, no, there's a, uh, there's a bag uh, I see around some of the trees. Uh, a tree gator. A tr mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what it is, yeah. a tree gator. Now, the benefits to a tree gator are, and it's a uh. uh, very ingenious product because for about, for about 20 gallons of water, you can slowly saturate the root ball uh -huh. of the uh -huh. tree by wrapping this, this uh -huh. gator bag around the tree. Um, difficulty there is that, you, you know, with the weight of the water, you're compacting the soil further. Yeah. Um, you're not achieving, you're, you certainly never achieve an 18 inch uh, no, saturation. No. Um, and your, your drip line isn't served at all yeah. by irrigating the stem of the tree. So it's, it's okay to preserve uh, new plantings. This is much better because when you're the, fertilizing the gas tree, exchange in this. Ferris, when you're fertilizing a tree, you don't fertilize up by the tree trunk. You fertilize it Absolutely. out. Absolutely. You want the feeder line Out mm -hmm. here. Right. I've always explained that 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 I can pick something up, I can pick my food up out here. And also, that's where, and that's Dr. John, I, I'd like to point out that um, fertilizing a tree is not, not always necessary. And if an arborist would, would suggest to you to fertilize your tree, I would ask that arborist, have you done a soil analysis? Um, and we're finding that 
a lot of a lot of so-called planned health care um, systems would prescribe deep root fertilization without any analysis of the soil, which it doesn't make any doesn't sense. Match, yeah. why, why would you why would you mm -hmm. add something to the soil that you don't know to be uh, mm -hmm. missing? So mm -hmm. I, I would be careful as a consumer about going with a deep root fertilization program when that may, that may not and actually probably is not mm -hmm. what's what's uh, needed. Well now uh, our time is running out pretty fast and I have to ask you a $64 question, okay? And that is this. I was over to Springfield Mall. I probably shouldn't mention that. But anyway, I'm going to mention it because what's happening over there is wrong with their trees. Somebody went over there and was selling them a bill of goods on mulch. The mulch is three feet high against the trunk. Yeah, Two and a half be. easily, three feet. It's, it's, what do you call it, volcano mulch? Volcano mulching is how we refer to that. I mean, yes. it's so up there like this. You should be really careful about, we're looking for, in mulching a tree, firstly, we're looking for mulching the drip line of the tree, not the stem right, of the yeah. tree. The, the, the mulch has no business against the stem of a tree. It should be out, it's, it benefits. Give me five. <laughs> it benefits the roots. It doesn't benefit the stem. And it actually would harm, harm the stem. That's right. We're looking for a depth of not more than four inches ever with that's mulch right. because we need gas exchange. That's what. Unless you're in the mulch business. Right. You're in the mulch business. Well, you're the mulch <laughs> business is doing fine. <laughs> <laughs> I think they're, they're doing fine uh, because uh -huh. mulch does uh, decompose, biodegrade. Uh -huh. We need it every year. It's a very. Mulch yeah. is wonderful. It's wonderful for trees, especially in a suburban environment uh -huh. where we rake all our leaves away. That's right. You know, remember on the forest floor, that's it's all there. Yeah, the nutrients are there for the tree. Well, I also noticed, too, that many times the tree was planted wrong from the very beginning. It's planted too shallow. They don't want to dig a deep enough hole. So they dig right, a, they a shallow pan, that with mulch. and they camouflage it, and then a windstorm comes, and down it goes. Mm -hmm. Did you see right. any of that, by the way, this past winter? Lots of it. Lots of snowstorms it. really, really uh, yeah. devastated this yeah. region, mm -hmm. and we've been cleaning up ever since. But you know, root depth is a really good, and this is what this is what we're working on is uh, getting some of that compacted so compacted soil to break up, to be irrigated, to encourage roots to go deeper, mm -hmm. um, and that's you know that's what we're uh, we're starting to find with a lot of our our newer clients is that uh, you know they're. The, their trees are much more healthy if we, if we concentrate on the. On I think the, we've got to wrap it. Fruits. I don't know what happened at the time. Okay. By the way, real quick, you don't. I know you don't, but okay. I want our viewing audience to know this. You don't stop at the Seven Eleven and pick up a bunch of guys and go out to do. Oh no, no way. Uh, highly trained. Highly yeah. trained. That's right. We're uh, ISA uh, certified arborists. Every time. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. Well, thank you for coming on, boy. You're covering an awful lot in thank you, quick Dr. time. Thank you, Dr. John. All righty, folks. Whatever you do, don't pay in advance when a guy walks up to your door and says, I'll cut that tree down, give me 50 bucks or $100. You know, when they ask, that's, that's the bad news, right? Right, right. Yeah. You should definitely uh, check, check credentials yes. and check, uh, check the insurance certificate. The insurance yes. certificate also, if I, I don't know how much time we have, should come from the insurance company and not from the contractor himself. Oh, is that right? Yes, it should. Yeah. Come from the insurance. Uh, not, we got to wrap it. Not from the truck. Okay. <laughs> Folks. Thank you for watching Gardening News and Views with Dr. John. Tune again next week for more news about gardening. Have a good gardening week. The funding for this program was made possible by a grant from the Pro Arbor Tree Care Professionals. Pro Arbor Tree Care Professionals are members of the International Society of Arboriculture. You should demand a certified arborist for the care of your trees. Using Pro Arbor Tree Care will lead to good healthy trees. They follow safety rules using proper techniques and the latest of equipment. The only way to know is to call a pro. So put your trust in the Pro Arbor team. Call 703-209-7247.